Let's give our guests a hand clap of love. We started, you, you missed our meet and greet we normally do in our services, but we greet you in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right before the speaker, Elder Greek is getting ready to come, but we have this young man that is here uh, that we're going to give him 10 minutes to uh, share some information with you. Uh, it's it's uh, Brother Kenneth Perkins. Um, Sunday school teacher, native, native Houstonian, Fifth Ward, Fifth Ward. All right. He has his associate degree in arts and science from Houston Community College, bachelor of science degree in organization and leadership, uh, Mountain State University, member of Jehovah Jireh Church of God in Christ. A uh, member of the NAACP law enforcement. Uh, I think he's retired now with law enforcement since 1982. HPD, uh, he's current police sergeant, precinct two constable, awarded man of substance in May 2011, recognized by Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, state representative Sylvester Turner, and state uh, representative Dr. Alma A. Allen, state senator Rodney Ellis, and state representative Garnett Coleman. Uh, Brother Perkins is running for office precinct six, three, precinct three. So I'm going to let him come. Y'all show him applause as he comes. We want to encourage you, young people, 18 and above, exercise your right to vote. Thank God for being here today. Thank you, Pastor, First Lady, all the people of God here today. Truly, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. You know, I, there's two songs I, I love. I love Sweet Honey in the Rock. Right. It's an old melody, Sweet Honey in the Rock. And on my heart this morning, troubles in my way. It's weighing on me so much this morning. And there's a lot of troubles in my way. But you know, I, I think of the goodness of what God has done. You know, I come here today, I want to say a lot of things, but you know, when I first walked in here today, and when I seen those young people up here singing, yeah. the Spirit said, there's hope. Yeah. Yeah. I began to smile and I wanted to yeah. cry because I seen these young men and young ladies up here giving all the praises to God. So I said, there's still hope. Irregardless of what they're doing or what they may be doing after they leave here or whatever, there's still hope that's embedded in them. We, we all been down that road, so nobody here is no, no more perfect person here. So we all have had issues in our life. If you don't understand what I'm saying, we all have seen and fallen short. So we don't have a right to point fingers at you, 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 you are me. Whether it's drugs, alcohol, women, gambling, home money, lying, homosexuality, whatever it is, I know a fixer. And I know you. Because you're here. And, and you know, I didn't get up here to say that. <laughs> but, but you know, God works in mysterious ways. God works in mysterious ways. But let me try to contain myself. And, and before the spirit take a hold of me, and you know, and, and I'm so glad it's Sunday because I'll be needing that extra help, people. Mm. I don't know about you, but I'll be needing that extra help because money through Saturday seems like it's just pure hell out here sometimes. Yeah. No job, no money, no nothing. You know, we all feel that pain, yeah. but why are we feeling it? That was a message today, time of thinking outside the box, yeah. but we always continue to think in the box. And we always want to put people in the office that continue to just have signs everywhere. We continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. And you know, as I came here today, and I hit that curve in that corner back there, I said, this is what I'm talking about. A dog in a trash bag. You seen it? If you came around that bend, you seen it this morning. Trash all around. That shouldn't be like that in your community. You come to praise God this morning, the first thing you see a bunch of trash around that bridge should be clean. Yeah. Those are just minor infractions that's in our neighborhood. Well, let me tell you this, and I'm going to try to talk fast as I possibly can. You know, and I need you people just to listen to me. I, I was actually in school to be a physician. I was going to school to be a doctor. And what happened, my father was murdered. And it kind of changed my whole path of direction.
to what I was doing. And so I was continuing to go to school, even though that transition happened to me in my life. I was going to school. I had eight other sisters and brothers. And we're from the northeast side of town. We came from Fifth Ward, but we all attended Shadyville, Farnwood, Northwood, and Forestwood. And some of y'all may know my mother. She's deceased now. She was a school teacher, Miss Perkins. And my younger sister was a chili, uh, school teacher at Shadyville, one taught at Hillier. And, and, and so, you know, I said, you know, go to school, watch my mother work and help my other eight sisters and brothers, but that was something that bothered me the whole time. And that's why I said, you don't never know what goes on in our children's mind. Here I am going to school and trying to do it, and I come home and tell them, I ain't going to school no more. I'm not going to be a doctor no more. I'm going to be a policeman. But the only reason I need you to listen, the only reason I was actually going into law enforcement, it was to find the murder of my father. And there's some things I wanted to do. And there's a book entitled Laying It Down that I've been writing for almost seven years. And, I, and, I, and it just came up, somehow I can't complete it yet. But I wanted to do something to that person. So when our kids are doing all these other things, you don't know what's twirling in their mind. And here I am in the law enforcement full HPD uniform. And one day I was given the opportunity to come face to face with the killer of my father. And you know it took every bit of God to hold me because I, that's what I seek out to do. I was on a journey to find this murderer and I did it. But God held my hands and held my tongue and kept me at peace at the end of the day. And I thank him for it. But I said on a journey for murder. I said on that journey to go look for this person that stole something, that took something from me. But I'm here to tell you people today, keep on your journey, but put God first. Yeah. Put God first. You know, I, I got a few calls, Pastor, since the time I came in and met you. They said, Mr. Perkins, why don't you get out of this race, Mr. Perkins? Perkins. Then they had friends of mine. Perkins, come on. Because they know I want to do good by the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what I was going to come here and tell you today because my mind was battling. I was tossing and turning all night long because I'm concerned about you. Mm -hmm. Because I want you safe. I want you to be able to go to work. I want you to be able to go home. I want you to be able to walk the street of Houston, Northeast Side, safely. Mm -hmm. So I said, God, I said, you're going to have to help me this morning. Give me the words because... The people's lives are in danger. You see it on TV every day. How they're taking our little girls by the hair, twisting their bodies and throwing them around while they're in bathing suits. Then they hanging our kids, shooting them as they're running down the street. I mean, sure enough, yeah, we, we, we have things that's unethical and against the law. But the law enforcement shouldn't do things out of, out of the law in there. They should be professional at all times. Amen. And we should be respectful to law enforcement as well. But it don't give them the right to disrespect us, even if we're not acting properly. Yeah. But I'm here today to tell you that a young man from Northeast Houston, if I could do these things with your help, we could make a better community. Right. Now, I'm coming at you because I want to be Precinct 3 Constable. We would make history. I would be the first black ever in the United States of Northeast Houston to be on that position. Right. But now, this is where a twist comes. I don't want to, I'm not going to call them by the name, but there are so many people that's in this race. And my mind, I'm going to ask y'all to pray for me about this. That I was thinking about going with this other guy to help him. Because if we have five people that look like you and I in this race, and you have two Caucasians in this race, you understand the division of the votes, right? It's going to be split. So I ran before one of this other guy ran before, and, and, and I'm thinking about joining forces with him just to save the lives of our children. But I want to make sure it's a proper decision, the right decision. Because I don't want to get in there and split all the votes, and these other people walk in, and our children still get killed and murdered on the streets. So I need your prayers and, 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 and your prayers. But if for some reason you still see my name on that ballot, I, I'm going to need your help. I'm just going to be straight. I don't need your help. We don't have any Christian people downtown to represent us. I ran for city council two to three times, and I, I keep running for these positions because I realize we need some Holy Ghost downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? We need some Holy Ghost downtown. I'm not saying Brother Perkins is the most sanctified person around, but I do believe in God, and I know God is the way out of nowhere. Proverbs 20 and 13 says, 
A wise man follow the wise, you become wise. But associated with a fool, you always find yourself in trouble. Now I'm asking you, those that can, my name is Kenneth Perkins. I want you to remember that. I want you to remember. I want you to remember Kenneth Perkins. If somehow I tend to go somewhere else with somebody else, just remember my name and, and put me in connection with that person. And this young lady here been knowing me for almost 25, 30 years. Amen. She know. But I'm asking you, those that can and those that will, you young people, get out there. You know how your Facebook and email and all that kind of stuff. Put it out there that we believe in Mr. Kenneth Perkins. If he's run for anything, help him, support him, because we need it. I'm going to go to my seat, but I want to just thank you, Pastor. I want to thank God for allowing me this opportunity. But we need help. But the Bible says, if my people that are called by thy name will just humble themselves, seek faith and pray, and turn from their wicked ways. People, we have to turn from our ways. It's difficult sometimes, but we got to put that bottle down. We gotta put that, that stuff down. You know what I'm talking about. Put that joint down, put that, 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 that blunt down, put that, that, that Xanax down, put that pill down, put that game room down, put that whole monkey down, put that lion tongue down, people. Yeah. And I'm talking about me too. Yeah. Cause we need Jesus yeah. right now. Yeah. Don't you need Jesus? But we have to help ourselves. The pastor's here to help you be saved in a spiritual manner. I'm trying to help save your life in a natural manner. Because the Bible says first natural, then spiritual. I'm trying to keep it as real as I can get. And young people, I'm so proud of you. Young ladies, I'm so proud of you. Stay strong. Stay mindful. Young men, stay mindful. Be respectful. But let me tell you this, and I'm going to sit down for real because I like to talk when I talk too much. But let me, let me tell you this. Use your own mind. Don't let anyone persuade you to do nothing that you really don't want to do. Use your own mind. Don't let me, the pastor, nobody persuade you to do what's right. You do what's right because you know what's right. Because the only person that's going to get you in heaven is you. But the pastor's a good man. He's the leader. You obey him. As God gives him the orders to, to, uh, to, to do what he needs to do to keep you on path. But the Bible says we have to pray. We have to pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. But he said, we study, we have, not because we ask not. And this is the most serious thing. You know what? We perish because of lack of knowledge. I come here to give you information and to give you knowledge and to give you wisdom. And we need to receive it, people. And I understand some people, knowledge may be a little bit slower than others and have to take you up these roads. And like, that, that's okay. But if you ask God, God will show you the way. So I'm asking you for this opportunity. Support Mr. Perkins. Those of you that can, and those of you that will, do it. Pastor, I'm, I'm, asking, I'm going to give you this mic, Pastor, because you know I'm a, I may be a bit lower than I suppose. But I'm asking you to thank God. I appreciate everything. Y'all remember, when you go to the polls, vote to the polls. All right. All right, God bless you. We'll be praying for you also. Come on, stand to your feet and receive the man of God who's going to... Give us a word this morning, Elder Grigsby. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. You know, I truly appreciate what's been going on this morning. And it kind of just put me in the mood to go back. And y'all say, now we got to keep moving forward. Now we can't move forward till we know where we've been. Right. Amen. Amen. For your consideration, y'all bring your, put your Bible on uh, Mark chapter 11. And I think that 
12 and 13, I'm sorry. Mark 11, 12 and 13. When you have it, so you have it. Amen. Before we go any further, let me ask permission to talk to you. Dear Heavenly Father, precious Lord and Savior, I call on you this morning, Father God, with a joyful heart, knowing that I've been kept and kept all my life. Father, I stand before you right now with a word for your people. I ask that you allow me to be a vessel and to let not things of the world intertwine with what I have to say. Lord, I love you, and I pray for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm going to get y'all off your feet right quick. We're going to read these scriptures. And on the morrow, when they were came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree of four off, having leaves, he came. If haply he might find anything down, and when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of the fig was not yet. Amen. For your consideration. For the reading of the word. Amen. Now, for a thought, do your part. Amen. Do your part. That's all we have to do. Amen. We be in position to do a lot of different things. But those things are ordered by God to be done by other people. You're supposed to know between you and God, if you've got a relationship, you know what he wants you to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we get in trouble when we don't do our part. Don't do our part, but uh, want, want to do somebody else's part. Amen. We do that kind of record. But, yeah, what Mark was saying in those two scriptures was, was this. The fig trees had beautiful, pretty leaves. And when you see uh, something like that, you walk in anticipation out of need of necessity because you have the idea that you're going to find what you want and something that's pretty. Oh, y'all missed that. Amen. Y'all missed it. Your knees, that, uh, all your wants and your needs is in something pretty. But how many of us know our wants and needs, our, our, our everyday existence come from the Lord? You know? It comes from the Lord. And if we stay with it, we'll know. Amen. But what happened was God, by Jesus, anticipating good things. And when that tree didn't have anything, you know, Jesus is a teacher, amen? He's a teacher. And, and, and he just don't go up on mountaintops to teach. If we are teachers, those that profess to be teachers of the word, this ain't the only place we're supposed to go to do it. Because people are dying because they don't want to do their part. Amen. 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 The uh, prodigal son didn't want to stay with his dad. He took off. Amen. Didn't want to do his part. But what happened? Had to come back. He had to come back. And sometimes, church, we out there, and with everything that's going on in this world, we are not thinking about coming back, even though we're supposed to. Because any person that has good sense knows that they can't put their hand in the fire without getting burned. 
And at some point in time, you got to realize that for yourself. You don't have to go through these trials and tribulations. We get together, get all dressed up, looking like new money. Amen? But if someone in need comes to us, we just like a fig tree. We look pretty, but we're broke. And I'm not trying to tell you that, that, that those that are, are fashion, uh, fashionistas, that's what they call it, you know, uh, y'all keep on looking good. All right. Just keep on looking good. But all the time I want you, all the time I want you to, 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 to concern yourself with what's going on is when it comes time to do your part. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen? When it comes time to do our part, we have a little problem. Yeah. But that fig tree that Jesus was talking about, it was a symbolic uh, fig tree. By that I mean, it was a real tree, but Jesus was teaching. In fact, this is the last stages of his walk where he was uh, educated. This is the last teaching in, uh, in this book of Mark right here, the 11th and the 12th chapter. These are the final things that he was going to say on this side of glory. Amen? Amen. But as he was teaching, he was trying to tell the people that if you do not produce if you do not produce, you're cursed. Right. Amen. How many, how many times we can sit up there and say, if, if, if God gives you something and you don't lose it, and don't use it, you're going to lose it. Yeah. Well, this is the teaching right now that Jesus is dealing with uh, the fig tree, which is really Israel. That's what he was, he, 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 he was saying to them. Yeah. Amen. Because they needed to know that. You, we all need to know what's meaningful in our lives. Amen? And, and, and it's just so simple sometimes when you think about it. They, they want to, it ain't nobody talking about do the right thing. You know, do the right thing sounds good. But a better saying is do your part. Amen? Your part might not be a guilt. Amen? Your part might not be uh, 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 someone that want to take charge and do things. A lot of times we have to live in our life in our, in our specific places and be subordinate to those that have the rule over us. Amen? If I got tired of being Elder Griggs and wanted to be pastor, you know, I can't be pastor. That's not my part. God has given me a job to do. Yeah. Amen? He's given me a job to do. Now, in verse 12, it's saying, Jesus answered and said unto him, No man eat from the fruit thou. The thing about it is, when he cursed that fig tree, he didn't curse it for a season. He cursed it. Amen? And see, if you're not going to feed me, I'm going to curse you too. Right. Amen. Right. If I come to this building expecting to hear the word of God and you don't want to feed me, right. you curse with a curse. Right. Amen. I have the right, according to Jesus Christ, to be fed. Amen. And see, a lot of times people think they're talking about being fed is about eating. Amen. We all have to feed each other. When we get together, different people come together and they just talk. Yes. Pastor, Pastor, like to say, like the scriptures say, iron sharp as iron. Yes. Amen. Amen. New revelations will come to you each and every day if you do your part. Amen. Amen. Do your part. I tell you what. In Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37, verse 3 and 4. When you just want to look at that real quick.
Spirit of the Lord was upon me, talking about Ezekiel, and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. And he set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. Amen. And he caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there was a very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou know it. And again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Why did God lift up Ezekiel? Amen? See, because if you're not spiritually led, you can't take that spiritual journey. Amen? Amen. If Ezekiel was right with God, God would have gave him that precious knowledge. Wouldn't have gave him a different part to do. Amen? So we got to understand, Ezekiel was a workhorse. He's one of the working his prophets uh, in the Old Testament. He got the job done. But what he found, what we found out is what God could do when he wanted to. But how many of us know that even though God can do it, he'll give us the responsibility to do it. And see, that and I, we're right back to where we, where we came from talking about do your part. Amen. If Hezekiel had not, but he did know. And the way that he said he answered it is really, really the, 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 the mainstay of the dry bone era. He said, Lord, you know it. Yeah. With confidence. You know it. And sometimes you got to be stroked. He's stroking God right now. Yeah. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to be a tear down, a destruction man. But the thing about it, Ezekiel did that. But if you do your part, you can bring them dry bones back. Amen? Now, what Ezekiel did is what God asked him. Speak to the dry bone. It's a world full of dry bones. If you speak to them, you can bring them back to life. Amen? Everybody that, that's sick ain't dead. Right. Amen? Amen? But we need a little help from the people that are healthy. The people that are dressed up real pretty. Amen? Amen. You got to find out what God is talking about. Amen? And he, he, Ezekiel went so far and said, Lord, you know it. He's just telling God that, hey, I know that you know, and I know that you're capable, but all I have to do is do my part. And that's what God asked him. Mm -hmm. With all that knowledge going on between them, God asked him to do his part. What did he ask him? He told him to speak to the wind. Yeah. All right. Now, if you get told to speak to the wind, are you going to speak to the wind? Yeah. Amen. Amen. But Ezekiel, being full of the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord, answered him and spoke to the wind. And guess what happened? The bones started rattling. You know, they started moving. And I, I can just see Ezekiel over there to the side. Go, Lord, go. Go, Lord, go. You know it that I know it that you can do these things. But he spoke to the wind. God gave him three things to do. Yes, Amen. Amen. And he brought back a nation. Mm. Yes. All right. We go through our lives right now today with one thing to do. Yeah. Is what Jesus asked us to say, go ye therefore and teach our nation. Mm. Yeah. That's what he told us to do. But we ain't done it yet. Amen. Amen. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. We got to get a little, a little Ezekiel in our spirit. Amen. And everyone is not going to be as privileged as Ezekiel. Yeah. Right. 
to have that type of relationship Ezekiel had. Yeah. But the main promise about that is this. When you know what you know, yeah. it's easy to do what you do. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. If I did not know how to plumb, how to be a plumber, yeah. it would be so hard and I was so confused that I couldn't get it done. When we go out there speaking to people, amen, right. if you know what you're supposed to know, if you do what you're supposed to do, it's that much easier to do your part. We got to come inside this building to do our part. Amen. We got to come in here and let somebody put a burden on our shoulders. And you say, now nah, preacher, don't talk about burdening me down or nothing. Amen. But sometimes we need to put something on people. Amen. In order for them to shake the devil off. Amen. And when we put something on people, we, when, the way we do it, we speak the word of God. See, uh, the word of God can be a blessing and a curse. It really can. Bless those believe that love and curse those that walk away. Amen. We can't stop them from walking away, but we can call them. We can call out for them. God been calling out for the nation of Israel for 4,000 years. They ain't came back yet. But they're getting help here. Amen. They got a little help. If you go back in the, uh, in the Bible to uh, Genesis, when they, we, he went to talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. How do, I mean, do y'all know that they did their part? Amen. Abraham did his part. He picked up everything and left and went where God told him to go. Amen. He didn't ask questions, right. even though he had some. Yeah. That's when you know you're walking in the spirit of God. Yeah. When you do your part and don't have all the answers. Yeah, right. And I don't know what that means, but I, I like to be well informed. But some, with this gospel, it ain't about being well informed. It's about in being in love with God. Yeah. God don't ask you to be a, a rocket scientist. He just asks you to do your part. And we love him for that. Amen? Amen. And the thing about the prophecy, it was in, in uh, verse 12, it told that Ezekiel, once he spoke to the wind, the Lord asked him to prophesy over these bones. The Lord, they just bone. Amen? They just bone. But he told him, prophesy. See, see, where we are lacking in our everyday lives is this. We don't believe that we can do the impossible. Okay, yeah. Amen? Right. When we don't believe we can do the impossible, we'll settle for the ordinary. All right. All right. Amen? Sometimes you got to step out on faith. Amen? Amen? Amen. No one didn't have no idea. No one had never seen a boat. In fact, if you, if you look at the scripture, it, I don't want to be caught because I should have uh, referred to this fact again, but I'm about 90% sure rain hadn't started coming yet. No. Amen. Amen. And don't y'all go to talking about well, how they did to do. <laughs> Amen. It's the do. That's how they survived on the do. But God told, uh, told Noah to build a boat. And what are you going to need a boat for? Ain't no place to put it. But Noah had to do his part. Right. Amen. He had to do his part. Where would we be if Noah hadn't done his part? Right. Abraham hadn't done his part. Right. Yeah. Jacob hadn't done his part. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right. Amen. We saw him living. God wouldn't have no, no temples built. Yeah. Wouldn't have no uh, 12 stones yeah. to recognize things. Yeah. Amen. He would have nothing, but yet still, they did their part. Are you willing to do your part? That's what we want to know. Are you willing to do your part? I didn't say that you had to be 100% sure that you were going to get it done, but you got to be willing to try. 
Amen. You have to be willing to try. Amen. Prophesy. Amen. Unto them. Oh, my people. Yeah. And he said that I will open up the grave. Open up the grave. Give you an avenue yeah. to get out of that dead situation you are in your life. Right. Right. Amen. We'll give you a way out where there's no way. Yeah. But not only that, he said he's going to open up the grave and let you come out of the grave yeah. and the wind going to take over. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. The wind going to take over. What it going to do? It's going to blow new life. Yeah. New life. And to dry bone. We are all dead. From the time we're born, we're dying. Amen. Amen. From the time we're born, we're dying. But we got to know that there is a way to live after we've been cursed. Amen. There is a way for us to do what needs to be done. Amen. But the key, we have to do our part. Everybody don't want to do their part. Amen. We know God can do all things, but yet still we have to do our part. Right. And what our part is, is understanding. Abraham had understanding. Isaac had understanding. Jacob had understanding. But I know when I know what I'm supposed to do. Amen. Amen. Even when it comes to the part where we know the end is near. Yeah. Amen. We don't want to recognize the end. But Jesus called them all together. Say, y'all, it's chow time. Bring out the silver. We're going to eat this last meal. And they didn't understand about the last meal. Golly, I'm going to be hungry in the morning. But they didn't understand Jesus. They thought they did. Yeah. But the miracles that he was doing, the, the, the fig tree bewildered them. Yeah. Why did he do that? But they had to think of it. And they knew that that fig tree, by not being productive, all it had was show. God just, I mean, Jesus just touched him. Did y'all see what he did? Did y'all see what he did? He touched him. He touched him. And you know what? There comes a time in our life that he's going to touch us. Amen. He's going to touch us when we refuse to do what we know is right. Amen. When we refuse to. Or we can do like the travelers did when Jesus asked them to come to the supper. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Right. Yeah, any supper that our Savior, everything he did, he did on a full stomach. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Yeah. He knew 5,000 people needed something to eat. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To get their mind on the word and not on their stomach. Right. Amen. Yeah. Well, how are we going to do it? I think we go, okay, I got two loaves. I mean, I got two fish and five loaves. Yeah. How are we going to do that? Yeah. Well, he didn't ask them what, how you going to do that. He just asked them to do your part. Yeah. Go get it. Yeah. That's your part. Go get it. Yeah. And let me do the rest. Yeah. Let me do the celebrating. Yeah. Let me do the addition. Just <clears throat> the allow. Amen. He's been taking care of me a lot of years. Amen. Yes, he has. I was talking with Brother Harry a couple of weeks ago. And Harry, this is, I'm not sitting up here throwing you out in front of the woods, but I'm going to take you with me down this path. We have testimonies that everybody ain't ready for. Amen. Amen. And our testimonies are so me, that we can't tell it all on one first Sunday. Amen? But God is going to give us utterance in his time. Amen? What I'm trying to say is years ago, I did.
did my part for me. God's part was for somebody else. But we already know that if we got a person in Australia that's called to do something and refused to, they've got a perfect link with somebody that's in Atlanta, Georgia, because they might be waiting on that word or that package. We all have to continue to be strong in the word of God, continue to talk to other people about it, continue to do our part. Continue to do our part. Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, yes, but the labors are few. Yes, yes. Amen? Amen. See, 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 if you're going to be a laborer, what, you, what do you have then? You have a part to play, a part to do. Amen? He didn't ask for no supervisors. He didn't ask for no superintendents. He asked for laborers. Do your part. The Last Supper. Jesus sitting up there with his disciples. Then eating bread, wine. Amen. But he looked around and he, he, he knew what he had to do was connected to what someone else had to do. And that someone else was Judas. All right now. Amen. He just told Judas, look here. I can't do my part till you do your part. Amen. I can't get up unless you do your part. Where would we be if Judas hadn't told me? Don't think about that. See, what I'm trying to say, some of the time these bad things we think with that people say, that there's a lot of character that shouldn't be done. But you got to understand, we all got a part. Good man got a part. Come on. Come on now, Jesus. I mean, Judas. Hurry up. Go tell it. Go tell it. Tell him to meet me in the garden. I'll be there. And Judas wouldn't tell him. He wouldn't tell him. He did his part. Thanks, Sister Rand. Once he did his part, he couldn't live with himself. This is what I'm trying to say. On the bad things that you think that you can't uh, give me forgive, the Brother Harry, you did your part. Elder Grigsby, you did your part. Amen. Once we do our part, it's done. Now, 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 if we have to, like Mike was teaching this morning, if we have to, we're going to have to repent for them things. And you can't find everybody that you trust in your life. But you don't have to. All you got to do is give it to God. Give it to God with a sincere heart. Amen. Someone, I believe the gentleman spoke, uh, Mr. Perkins spoke right there uh, just a minute ago about, ooh, I forgot, just that quick, I was just going to say, I was just going to say, what did you say? <laughs> yeah. See, that wasn't my part, that's why I'm having trouble with it. <laughs> see, see, if that was my part, I'd have picked it up right then and did what God wanted me to do. Don't you know God is not the author? confusion, but he can stir things up. Right. Amen. Amen. <coughs> but I know a man. Amen. 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 I know a man that knew his part. Amen. 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 I know a man that for 2,000 years yeah. waited uh -huh. to do his part. Yeah. In fact, in the beginning, he was that. Yeah. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen? And he told his father right then, Father, he over there on the bench, let me suit up. 
Let me suit up. I got a part to play in this here. This is a great big picture. I got a part to play in this here. All you gotta do is let me go. God did his part. Go. Go do your part. I want you to go down through 42 generations. Go take a while. We're gonna make sure everybody that's mentioned in that lineage takes his part. David did his part. Amen. Saul did his part. Jesse did his part. Mary sure did give up a lot, but she did her part. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you got to give up to, to do your part. Sometimes you got to be willing to do your part. But just like Jesus told Judas, I can't do mine till you do yours. If he had not did his, where would we be? If he had not volunteered to be taken swiftly out of the God. Come take me now. Now he had a little few trials and tribulations. He had a little help because he spoke to his father and said, Lord, remove this bitter cup. Amen. Remove this bitter cup. If it's not my time, let me go. But his father told him, it's your time. It's your part to be played. Can't nobody do it but you. Can't nobody take a look at the top but you. Can't nobody save us but you. Can't nobody move forward but you. Nobody can accept the responsibility but you. It was a long march of God got the hill. It was. Jesus was bending down and couldn't make it. But that was Simon. Simeon. Yeah, he did his part. Picked up that cross and walked with it. Sometimes we got to pick up our cross and walk with it to do our part. And sometimes when we get to the end of that journey and we see the picture and it's not what we want it to be. No one wanted to see. Well, I don't see no one. But you know, because the uh, uh, Pharisees and Sadducees, they was glad to see it. Amen. But no one wanted to see him stretched out. Nailed to the cross. But I remember from the teaching when he said, I be lifted up. Amen. You can lay me down all you want. You can nail me hands together. You can nail my feet together. But sooner or later, you're going to lift me up. And when you lift me up, I'm going to draw all men under me. I came here to do my part. Amen.